Hey guys, with you Toxic Couple again and again and today we're gonna react on Andrew Tate. Oh, gross. <laughs> I know she doesn't like Andrew Tate but I want her to have an opinion after she hear him because she never hear him speak only how flexing. I flexing. Yeah, only flexing so she hate how he flex. So I want us, I want her to know what he speak about and then she can make a conclusion but first we but we've, uh, before we dive into the to the reaction i have surprise guys we reach 1000 subscriber and i'm happy <laughs> we can see we need to celebrate every small uh, achievement we do yeah so the surprise was that lunch my design i still didn't put it on the shop but i lunch it be simple and if you want to support us more with your donation i leave the link in the bio you can find it downstairs you can just click and buy us a cup of coffee buy us a cup of coffee i appreciate every one of you guys thank you for everything so we dive in uh. <clears throat> See if you're going to get married one day absolutely you'd like to if i'm not married already i would i will be married one day if i'm not well, you, you might be secretly <laughs> married I, I could be married yeah because i i think he's married but he's still hiding it but this one was a long time ago this is best uh, moment with andrew tate and pierce morgan the new uh, video of pierce morgan and andrew tate i still didn't watch it i still didn't watch it the, the new interview with him it was a long time ago but I still didn't watch it Correct. Why would you not tell me either way? Why would I advertise to the feral psychopaths of the world who have tried their very best to destroy me for an opinion about my private life and the things that are most sacred to me? Why well, you would think I do if that? you said you were married, everyone would hate you? I don't know people hate me. It's about me understanding that I'm a hard target, but I am very, very protective of the people I care about. Right. But you believe in the concept of marriage? Completely. That's what we were talking about the whole time. What do you think? I we mean, talked about a man giving a woman away. Okay. I believe in marriage more than anybody. In fact, I believe in marriage. In, no, please. Okay. I believe in marriage in the traditional sense. I believe a man has a duty to stand up and be a real man. I believe that the problem with the world today that we are facing is that not enough men are sticking to the age-old ways of masculinity. Mm -hmm. I believe that me standing up and saying a man must protect a woman and provide for her, so he needs to make sure that she's safe. He needs a degree of authority to I protect her. I have no her. problem with. No, but no. You, but people do have a problem with it. I'm, and that's I'm the, not sorry. And that's the world we're in now. Andrew, I'm over here. Sure. I don't have a problem with what you just said. Here's where my problem comes, right? There are a lot of clips of you floating around on the internet, as you know. One of them has you saying, bang out the machete, boom in her face, grip her by the neck, shut up, bitch. In another, you say, slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. When people see those clips and they hear you say those them. things. Agreed. Well, I don't think that there's a whole bunch of men. Well, if this is true and these clips are exist, uh, I can say only that there is like a two faces of Andrew Tate. It's not. I, I will explain to you. Basically, imagine you're doing a full content of one hour, okay. and people take only what they need and fabricate them, like put them together, like punk, 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 punk. Okay. So they're look. gonna make it seems like they use. You said it, but mm -hmm. in the metaphor when they fabricate it, it's like put sex here, machete here, and they put them all together and it's going to be like that. You understand? Yes. That's what I'm saying. But till now, what do you think? Okay. He said about the tradition. The position about the traditional marriage, I like it. And in general, the word that he said, I like it. But the point is, if he have a two faces and the one clip he said without the montage, let's say opinion. like this. He said one thing and right now on TV show, he tried to show a best side of his. That's kind of fucked up all right let's dive in more guys she she does she never heard him speak so she this is this is the first time yeah i'm in the world who understands my value and if if men grow up to be like me you're gonna have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record dedicated athletes who protect and provide for the people close to them are fantastic for the economy and we're and i'm not i'm certainly not the worst influence out here peers you have little naz twerking on the devil on music videos which our children are digesting you have uh, drill art is singing about stabbing people to death in the middle of a knife crime epidemic. You have rabid uh, psychopaths on w whether the right or the left announcing violence on the other side. You have all these insanities in the world. And because I sit here and say, I, yeah, perhaps, now you've, you've laid it out and it offended you, I understand. Me I didn't say it offended Okay, me. cool. I just read you the things. You read things that you said they could be offensive and some people are offended. Well, some people definitely were offended. Absolutely. That's fine. And, and honestly, 
I think some of the things you said were genuinely offensive and misogynist. Okay, so they offended you. I, like actually, I, so like I said earlier, so they offended you, no, which is on. fine. I said they offended you, you interrupted me, and now you're saying they offended you, which is fine. And the, But the point I'm trying to make is this. I'm not the devil. There are certainly worse people than me. And, I there don't just and he's completely right here. He's not doing such a bad things. And there is... No you can find like a... No matter what he's doing, he is selling his content. He's making money yeah. from his content. And this yeah. is all about, you right? So as I'm trying to, and I understand him, because you know I follow him. So I understand what he speaks. I, I don't agree on everything he says, just for you. I don't agree on everything. For example, when he says uh, men need a lot of women and sleep with a lot of women. Did he say that? Well, in a mad way, because back in the days, yes, immense, uh, all the conquerors. Did he say yes. that? Okay. I, I follow him, I know what I'm saying. In all cases, he is not right here because he cannot be the bad, the bad influencer here and there is a lot of... Uh, you saw the clip. They do concert like here the, with the devil and you see some... Wow, like people yelling like devil noises and shit. Come on. And you ban him from school, it's not right. It's and they exist. Right. I have core tenets that the people who don't understand me are self-accountability, because mm -hmm. I'm accountable for everything I've ever said, my core tenets are responsibility, so I'm responsible for everything I've said. My core tenets are traditional masculinity to a degree, which involves protecting and providing for women. And I'll make another point, another point here that's very, very, that's very, that needs to be said. The number of women who have stood up and stuck up for me is ignored. Thousands of women are making videos saying, I've met Andrew Tate, he's such a nice guy. I wish I had a man like Andrew Tate who felt responsible to protect and provide for me. You know what? I, I do belong to my husband, that's why I married him and I love him. We ignore the thousands of women who stood up and, and, and stood by me and said everything I said is true. And we're taking a very vocal minority who have taken the things I've said and are pretending to be absolutely and utterly devastated by them okay. for some reason. All right. I mean, time out. Time out. Sure. You've had a good, a good phase. Grip her by the neck. Shut up, bitch. In another, you say slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. When people see those clips and they hear you say them. those things... Agreed. Well, I don't think that... It's not hard to misunderstand it. It is. You might say that it's consensual. Other people would say, whether it's consensual or not, that's a very ugly way to talk about women. Completely. Now let's Hitting watch... them with machetes. No, watch the whole video. It's a girl coming at me with a machete and me saying, here, slap the machete out of her hand. She's attacking me. So you don't understand. This is the exact point. I do the understand. Con... No, people don't watch them in full. And this is actually what's interesting. And this is exactly what I was telling you, talking to you, because they he have a content of one hour and they they took clips and they put them together and he seems like he's like this. But in all cases, whatever he says... That's not right. Yeah, and this kind of things. Please don't interrupt but me on this point. Social media has changed in modern times. YouTube five years ago was five, six, seven, eight minute long videos. Mm. Now we have TikTok, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, YouTube shorts, Instagram stories. Now anything you produce that's long form is cut down to very, very short form. They're interested in clicks. They're interested in engagement. Of course. They find but the most. From they that. find the most controversial clips they can and Andrew, on purpose. You benefit, given that you know it can be. Of course, be he benefits from them. Do you regret saying things like this <laughs> on camera, where face. it can be disseminated by less intelligent young males who think that is actually what they should be doing to women? And finally, we get to the point of the issue, which is the point I tried to make at the very beginning. When I made a video before I was famous that got 500 views, me being concerned that one percent of people will misunderstand it was not relevant. Where not, you start getting 5 million views a video, 50 million views a video, 1% of people misunderstanding it. doesn't it change what becomes a, No, it doesn't, but it becomes a much larger problem. I understand. So with great fame That's true. comes great responsibility. Right. So, I agree. Would I, now that I'm famous, yes. do I say things the same way as I did back before I was famous? Absolutely not. Right. As neither would you or nearly any other famous person on the planet. So my logical, Once you become famous, you have to be a lot more careful with how you say things. I understand. So my logical follow-up to that remains... Do you regret then saying it the way you said it? I can't live in regret by saying something before I was famous on a camera which barely anybody watched and then I became famous afterwards. That would be a very asinine way to view the world. Do I can't live in... Do you I, stand by all those things? I can't live in regret because I didn't know I was going to become the most famous man on the planet. That, 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 t regret would be the wrong word. Is it, un is it inconvenient? Sure. But I can't sit here and say, I wish I knew six years ago I'd be the most famous man on the planet and monitored all of my speech forever. That's asinine. It was also, I think, quite a disturbing piece it, that BuzzFeed did. And it talked about the, the negative impact of young, impressionable male minds when they've read or seen some of the more inflammatory things you've said. And they quoted, for example, Sandy, uh, 22, from Washington. My father's gone from a man 
who minored in women's studies in college, who was kind and in touch with his emotions, treated all people, men and women around him with kindness, to a man who says that whenever he sees an effeminate male stranger, he gets an overwhelming urge to murder them. He loves podcasts, he listens to a lot of podcasts, I know he's listened to Andrew Tate. Whoa, 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 well, let's stop for a second. Let's be professional here, Piers, because you're a professional as yeah. am I. First, she said, did you say that my father went? She said, my father has Her gone. father. That's a full-grown man, mm -hmm. firstly. So we're talking about my impact on children. You just talked about a full-grown man here. Secondly, I've never talked about murdering effeminate men in anything online ever, on, in any context ever. So I don't know why they have taken some random person I've never met in the world who's full-grown, an adult, and come to their own conclusions who I've never met and lumped his name in with mine. That is absolutely unfair on every level. I didn't watch, I didn't read this BuzzFeed, I didn't read this BuzzFeed article, hmm. but after hearing the first point, I know it's trash. That is complete garbage. What to is sit your, and say what that is I'm the view? reason this man believes what he believes. I have seen disgusting. a quote from you. So. I said the reason I am so popular and I'm so famous is that there's a large contingent of men who don't want to wear makeup, who still want to make money, go to the gym, be strong, drive a fast car, be traditionally masculine, and don't want to be shamed for that, and they don't want to be called toxic for that. That is the <laughs> He said they don't want to be called toxic, and our channel is all about toxic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little bit another thing. Yeah, but good. anyway, so we watched seven minutes, and I believe for this seven minutes, I saw only one point that I didn't like, and it was about the bad words about the ladies, let's say like that. But here, he absolutely right. So we understand all about that uh, the market. Okay. See the difference, guys. Me, I'm focusing where he say the good point. She's still focusing on this point that where he spoke about the woman and machete and sex and stuff like this. So, they they place with emotion. They they take all the things that he said are good and they focus only about the girls the <laughs> and the boys are different. So, so that's why we taking our opinion from our point of view. Exactly. And you take it from so your. I have my point of view. I yeah, just, cool. I my point of. I don't follow whatever he say, mm -hmm. but some of his saying, they are same as mine. You already know how I am when you like to... Um, no, if I'm going to judge you about some point of view, I'm going to judge you completely without the words, someone, what is right, what's wrong. In my mind, there's words already. I mean, I have some understanding what's right, what's wrong. So I don't need any man like Andrew Tate. To don't give me correct, uh, you know, picture of the man or things I, like I this. I didn't tell you you need someone like him to give you a correct yeah, picture of the man. Yeah, but you wanted to me to compare no, his didn't... words with your personality. No, it's kind I... of wrong. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you did say it. No, I didn't say. I say it resonate like same point. Okay, I yes. didn't say to compare my personality with his word. Why you want to compare a word from him with my personality? Good. It's not. It's just about. <laughs> Okay, go. <laughs> Let's watch. The reason I'm so massively famous, that is what I said. What do you think of transgender people? That's nothing to do with me. I'm not transgender and I don't understand the issue like they do. They are, can you, do are you transphobic? They... Do, you, are you, do you consider yourself that? Transphobic? What, afraid? Uh, well, it kind of, yeah. Uh, you have I, don't live in, I don't live in fear, my friend. I, and, I, and I have no problem. You have a dislike of transgender people. I don't know any transgender people. Uh, but you have a dislike of what they stand for, what they are. No. But you have to understand also, the point of view, he's speaking about women. Why he went to transgender to speak about them? He try, they try to all the time trap, put him in a trap, like, you know, to, to keep him in one that's, area. That's a TV that's show, and you need to understand that they want to find uh, as much answers to the question that they have. So there was like a spicy topics. It's about the girls. It's about uh, what else he asked. Transgender. It's about what else. That's all so far. Yeah. So. Oh, why would I? I don't I, know. That's I'm not my issue. That's not my issue. And that's actually quite interesting because when I was attacked, a lot of these stupid articles like BuzzFeed, because it's ridiculous, that whole, that first point proves anyone with a brain knows that that's garbage. Mm. When they attacked me, they lump a whole bunch of things in together. They say misogynistic, racist, transphobic. They just put them all together at random. No, I, I'm mixed race. By the way, I, I don't know where they get these, they just get these buzzwords Andrew, and put them in, Andrew, in a sentence. By the way, I completely agree. So that. you support transgender people? Trans, I, I support individual liberty. I'm a libertarian. Yeah, so you support transgender people? Sure. Sure. Why not? Uh, exactly, yeah. So, but my point is, as a whole, you're saying that I'm saying I don't want to see men in dresses. I'm saying no. I'm you support that, gay people? Sure. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm saying there's a large contingent of men in the world who like the idea of the traditional masculine view of the world, who feel happy when they watch 80s action heroes with big muscles and they run yeah. around. 
and there's nothing toxically masculine about having a fast car and a beautiful girlfriend and making a bunch of money. And nothing being, at all. Absolutely. And those are the people who are my fans. I and agree. I'm, and I'm but saying... Actually, but the problem is... OK, I'm going to interrupt you so, just to say this. No, okay. no. OK, but this, you're saying that I have a problem with men in dresses. I'm saying no. The people who watch my I'm content... I'm that question. You've answered. Yeah, but the people who watch my content don't want to see men in dresses. Clearly, I don't wear a dress. That's the point that's I'm not making. why they're watching your content. No. You're not wearing a dress. No, but that's the point I'm making. That's the point I was making. There's a large contingent of men who are not interested in the things that perhaps the YouTube algorithm is trying to feed I them. I think there are lots of... I, I, look, when you support masculinity and masculine traits, I'm with you, right? Okay, so you agree a man should protect and provide for a woman? I, absolutely. Okay, so you agree if you were walking down the street with a woman, you'd be, you'd be responsible with her safety? Uh, yeah. Cool, absolutely. So if that woman wanted to walk alone... At I don't night, think they... I have authority over the woman right. as we do that. Okay, so let me ask you another question, Piers, because we are professionals. Let's say your woman decided she wanted to take a nice little walk through the south side of Chicago at mm. 2 a.m., and she wanted you to go with her, and you were responsible for fighting and dying on the spot if she was attacked. Mm. Don't you think you would say to her, no, we're not going out right now, it's not safe? Yes. Okay, so you'd have authority to make the decision. So no, I wouldn't. So I would make... say, so I don't agree. think you should. If she decides to, it's her own volition. Well, if she decides, you're not going to stop her. I have her. no power to stop her. Completely. But you think you do. No, I don't think I have power you to stop her. You clearly do. No, I think I have power to make the decision. I think, no, that's not sensible. So if you have the power to make the decision... I want to say, speak about this. Well, Pierce Morgan, usually, he go after people. He all the time impose the other, mm -hmm. you know, when he go to debate, no matter what is the topic, he's going to be against you. No matter what is the topic. If you, if he is vegetarian mm -hmm. and you you eat meat, he's going to be speaking about why you eating meat. But if you are um, if you are vegetarian and he eat meat, he's going to speak like, why are you vegetarian? You, suppose, you know what I mean? Yeah, all the time that's, opposite. That's so, his way to interview the people. Yeah, so I want to speak about here, about the woman's safety. Okay. What what do you think about here? What he says? O authority over her. Well, I believe that okay, uh, the man should protect his uh, girl, woman, wife, whatever is it, and uh, he have a right to take a decision. That's for sure. He have a right to share his decision, but also uh, we understand if this like for example, or a couple or. Um, partners they are supposed to communicate with each other so for example why she want to walk and so it should to be a healthy communication between each other one tell to another his opinion and so on yeah i i, I will address only what she's whatever she said it's right i will address only this uh, the woman will listen to you only if she respect you you understand that only if she respect you if she doesn't respect you she will not listen to you. She doesn't care about it. But you need to understand in the life uh, there is could happen dif in different situation. Like something happened and Let's it's say, 2 a.m. I need to refresh your brain. Let's say like this to go to walk a little bit. But you, it's not You safe. are the person who go to walk when you need to think about something and so on, right? But I will not listen what he's right? saying. Li yes, but listen to what he's saying. He say at 2 a.m. in Chicago, the most dangerous... You go to a place, the most dangerous place in okay. 2 a.m. You, you can get killed. You can get shot. You can go... I don't know the scenario. And you know that it's not safe. Would you let her go? Or you will tell her, it's not safe. We're not going for a walk. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So you, you are responsible for her safety because she's with you. And if the woman respects you, she will listen to you. That's my point of view. If a woman doesn't respect you, she's a liar. She's going to do whatever she wants. And she doesn't care because she also can do whatever she wants. I'm not saying she cannot do whatever she wants. I can see she can do whatever she wants. But when she respects you, she values your, your opinion. Can say it like this. She's gonna value your that's opinion. That's better. Yeah. A decision. You have the power to stop her. Uh, no, because and that's she... where we differ. And that's why I think it's interesting about you. I don't think you really think through what you're saying. I think through what I'm saying because what... so carefully. Yeah, but Andrew, Piers. what you've literally just said is that you have the power to stop. No, her. I said I don't have the power to stop her. I'm not going to lock her in the room. I'm saying that. So she a... wants to go on her own. Then she's going to go. Then. But you as don't a have authority to stop Okay, her. but as a couple, if we're going to sit there and decide if we're going to take this... You lane, asked me, would I feel a sense of responsibility for her safety? Absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. So, so would let me I finish, have the Piers. power or authority to stop her doing it? No. No, of course not. So let me finish, Piers. You're not going to stop her walking out the hotel. Of course, it's her decision. She's a sovereign individual. Mm. My point is that usually in a couple, people have... You'd sit there as a team and you discuss, and perhaps on certain issues... The woman will know more about X and she'll decide X, and the man might know more about Y and he'll decide mm -hmm. Y. So I'm saying if we're as a couple and we're sitting there and deciding, as a couple, as a team, 
and she says she wants to take this late night stroll, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to veto this one. I'm going to call but veto do you believe because in... it's dangerous, right. which two degree would give me in that particular scenario a degree of authority. She said, I don't want to listen to you. Andy. It doesn't give you authority. I, uh, she says, I don't want to. Have you watched it before? No. Okay. Talking the same words. Andrew, I want to go on that walk. Then what can I do? I say, well, then I. Then you I don't hope, have authority. Uh, then I hope. I wish you the best. Uh, th this this interview, I didn't watch it, and the last interview with Pierce Morgan, I I didn't watch them. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I saw only clips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this one is longer than uh, just 19 minutes. It's long, way longer. And the other one is two hours with Pierce Morgan, okay. the new one. But I didn't watch it at all. So guys, if you want me to react to it, please comment, and we're gonna do react. She she, she understand now how I speak, so we're gonna do it together. Even if she still doesn't like him, she's gonna do him. Mm -hmm. She's gonna react to him, guys. Yeah, that's not like couple do. You should do communication. Best. Oh, my you, you wanna do it? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about it. It's a semantic argument. Not really. I think it it's is. It's the complete opposite of what you said you had, which no. was authority. No problem, Piers. No problem. But I think I think and we actually. Ask you about what, what do you believe about depression? Do you believe depression is a real thing? I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe. Depression as a clinical disease is real now. Really? Correct. You don't believe people can be clinically depressed? I think PTSD is very real. I've, unfortunately, I have some friends who suffer from that. Mm. I know that feeling depressed is real. I believe that the number one power you have against these things are taking, trying to take control of your own mind and affecting your own life. I believe that it's not healthy to hand over all your power and believe that depression is an outside disease that you can't affect. I know that when I've had difficult periods in my life, and also many of my friends, like I've said, suffered from PTSD and been through terrible things. I've lived a very difficult life, and I know people who have, that the things that made them feel better is when they woke up and said, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to damage me anymore. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to fight this as hard as right. I can. Right, and I'm, by the way, on that, I agree. So we agree. Right? My favorite speech is the Rocky Balboa one. Okay, so then we agree. The okay, well, let me explain why. If someone comes to me and says, I'm clinically depressed, or I feel very, very sad, I would say the first thing you need to do is stop accepting the identity of a clinically depressed person. Stop accepting you have no control over this. And what you need to do is stop identifying that way and let's work together to try and fight but against it. there isn't it. an eminent doctor in the world who would tell you there is no such thing as clinical depression. I think Johann, who would not tell you that I think, some people I think Johann, is simply beyond their I think Johann Hari wrote a book saying exactly that, my friend. He's, but he's not an eminent doctor. No, but he, he's I, a journalist. I said depression wasn't real long ago and was attacked for it. Then Johan Hari wrote a book, which What's actually... What's going to do with Johan Hari? Because he wrote a book proving me right. Most people... Johan Hari's a journalist. Sure. And, and my point is that a lot of people who are clinically depressed are suffering with something in their life, and if you fix the problem in their life, perhaps they won't feel depressed anymore. No, but, that's not a disease. Yeah, but well, Andrew... That's what, situational. Andrew, you're simply wrong. If that's what you believe... Like, you know, that's right. All of us feel depression when we have some problems in the life and then we are like fixing them we are good we are happy and actually we cannot to be 24 7 happy exactly there is supposed to be a time in the life where we are upset and so on are you preaching yes i see that he made you preach huh? <laughs> no but I, I i just want to say this guys uh, the way Prince morgan said Ah, but you're wrong. I, I don't like a guy when you interview and say, oh, no, you're wrong. I, 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 I understand he's trying to trigger him, like provoking him. But when someone tells you you're wrong, I, it's much better if you say, I disagree mm -hmm. on the idea, then uh, oh, you're wrong, completely wrong. You know what I mean? But I understand he's provoking him. He's trying to tease him, like for this guy to attack him. I understand all this. What I will say about depression, depression is real 100%. But as you said, you explain it perfectly. You explain it perfectly. Uh, the, the feel of depression is real, but there is people who accept it and still lay down. They don't want to do anything and they still miserable, keep him going with that day. And there is people who just wake up, get up and still trying to fight it. That's how it works, guys. Pierce, it's what I believe. I don't believe in things that take power away. There from is them. not an eminent doctor in the world Pierce, who would agree with Pierce, you. Pierce, I you think you know more than doctors. I can't become clinically depressed. Why do you know? Because I don't believe in it. I can't be haunted by a ghost if I don't believe in ghosts. Well, that's like saying I'm never going to die because I don't believe in it. It's ridiculous. Perhaps, but if it allows me to live a life where I feel happy but and here's content where you, within so myself, is, again, this is that, you know here terrible. is the hypocrisy behind it. He, you cannot say, I cannot feel depressed, because you will feel depressed, even yeah, for one true. minute. Here's the I will not say hypocrisy, but it's, I will say that he is wrong right here. In my opinion, he's not. I don't agree with him, because depression, as we say, is real, but you can control it or you cannot. It depends on your mentality. But you, to say 
that I don't get depressed at all. It's yeah, you're right at that point. So everyone gonna feel depressed one even for or one another minute. day. Exactly. Um, everything depends how you act in this situation. Exactly. That's it. I agree so far, but this one is not. Will it's you lose me. No, I don't lose you. You are because, because Pierce, somebody with your following Pierce, says the thousands no of people, thing. the thousands of people who have emailed me saying my doctor told me I was clinically depressed and it's a disease that I have got in my brain and I can't be fixed. And I started listening to you and I realized that that's not the case and I can fix my own life and you're the only person who has you, ever helped me. Oh, Andrew. Thousands of people have Andrew, emailed me that exact think, email. If you think you are single-handedly curing people of clinical depression, you are living in cloud cuckoo land. I am reading the emails of people who I have cured of clinical depression. You're reading emails from people who I, I i respect that you think my view is dangerous and i respect you have the right to view that mm. to think that i think that clinical depression i actually agree with you is massively overdiagnosed i've already said that ptsd is a very real thing i've already said i didn't oh, hang on okay again you're misquoting me i i did not say clinical depression is massively overdiagnosed i said that people who claim to be depressed but don't have clinical depression i believe feeling depressed mm. is real i do not believe it's a disease that you catch from the sky and you cannot affect I believe that no matter what happens, I believe you have control of your own mind and you can fight against it. I believe if you change your circumstances in your life, you may feel different. I'll give you a quick example. I had a guy who emailed me saying he was clinically depressed and he was going to kill himself. I obviously am not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. I told him, because I replied to my emails. I said, have you been to a psychiatrist? He said, yes, I'm clinically depressed. I've been on these pills this amount of time. I've been on antidepressants. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. I said, I don't know what to say to you besides that he lost his girlfriend. That's why I became clinically depressed. I said, listen, go to the gym, get a six pack first. Once you've got a six pack, email me again. If you still feel like killing yourself, I don't know what else to say to you. But I'd say, strong body is a strong mind. Go train. He went. He started sending me progress pictures, emailing me him getting in better, better shape. And eventually got a six pack. He's now a professional bodybuilder. And he said, I can't believe I was considering that. I feel so much better, etc. The doctor was telling him he was clinically depressed and couldn't cure it. He started taking control of his own life, and now he felt better. Have you now seen I'm not saying it's the case for everybody. No, no. I'm just saying. Here's my question. Disag Influence over disagree. People. It's very responsible because I'm saving people's lives. I disagree that if you're di if you have, if you feel depressed, I disagree that you cannot affect it and change your life and take control and fix yourself and feel happier. I disagree with do that. You think, do you think? I, I, re I refuse to accept that. I will say this, guys. He, what he said here is right completely because, uh, like we said before, they are they are in circle. They are saying the same things all over again, like. It's real, but you can fight it. It's real, but you can fight it. They are turning in circle, as you can see. But I can, I can say, like, there is things that can make you happy, guys. For example, helping your mom to retire, to not work anymore, to provide for her, to provide for your family, to provide for your brother, sister, to provide for your wife, giving them the life they need. These all things can make you happy. Give to the poor people. You know, even if you're depressed and you give someone, you have that feeling of, oh, I did something good today. So you, you are putting your mind up and from time to time. So that's how it goes. My opinion. There are people out there who cannot become happy, contented individuals. I refuse to accept we live in a world where God has created people who no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes, mm. can't be happy. I don't accept that. I accept that the universe is a very giving place and that God loves all of us. And if you try your best and you work hard, you can become a better person. And I also will argue with you and I'll counter the point that you sitting here on your platform telling people they have clinical depression and there's nothing they can do about it is far more dangerous. That. Okay, well then, if they have clinical why depression... Do you miss, why do you misquote me? No, because you're you saying... You hate being misquoted. No, you're saying if people have clinical depression, then they, they, have a disease. To do about it. they go to a doctor and they get diagnosed cool. and they get help. Then I would argue the point that if it's somebody... the opposite of what you just said I said. I would argue the point that if somebody has depression of any kind, whether it's clinical, whether it exists or not, whether they feel mm. depressed or not, whatever, that taking control of their life, taking personal responsibility and working hard is always going to be the positive, best thing they can possibly do for their life going forward. How positive and the people is it? Around them. How... So sitting here saying, I don't believe in clinical depression, you don't believe in depression. No, I don't. Mm. I believe that people can take control and fight against things. Right. I believe in personal sovereignty. Right. Fine. Good. So uh, we agree. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. You support, uh, you support his right to speak. No, we don't. No matter what you say, no, I don't, don't agree with you. I don't agree. <laughs> I came to debate and we're going to debate. So sitting here saying, I don't believe in clinical depression, you don't believe in depression. No, I don't. I believe that people can take control and fight against things. Right. I believe in personal sovereignty. Right. Fine. Good. So uh, we agree. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. You support, you support his right to speak about things like Sandy Hook? I don't know Sandy Hook. I don't know. And you know what it was. Uh, it was a mass shooting. Of okay. school children. Oh, okay. But to sit and... and he, it's actually... No, no, let's stop for a second. Please don't interrupt me. The, here's why you're... 
I know why you're good at your job. First, you interrupt people a lot, which is good. It's a good skill. And there you no, go. No. Prove me right. It's on podcast with rabid leftists and, and, and people who openly hate me. I do, is it wrong? I do a podcast circuit. Okay. So it, and I don't know everything he's ever said. When somebody like and I don't know what so I don't okay. know what you're trying to say, get me here I'm because I did a podcast. If you let me get a word in edgeways, I'll tell it's, you. It's it's pretty it's it's a it's a lame trick. If you let me get a word in, sure. I will tell you. Let's go. Alex um, are suffering from depression and the negative effects of online content. The coroner said she was exposed to material that may have influenced her in a negative way, and in addition, what started as depression and become a much more serious depressive illness, and she very sadly took her life. That's, that's absolutely disgusting. Right. Her father... It's terrible. Her father's campaign for better protections against potentially dangerous social media algorithms, right? It says that the particularly graphic content she saw romanticized acts of self-harm, normalized her condition, and focused on a limited and irrational view without... Uh, uh, Why is she watching it? You have trouble with this internet, like you don't like a social media, it's affect on you, block your phone, buy an okay old one, enjoy the life. What's wrong with that? Isn't it? It's, it's a different topic, for to be honest, because, she, I don't know, I, I cannot uh, be in the mind of that, how the, that person, how he was thinking in that moment. You cannot understand what he went through, what, how, he, how he's going through. It doesn't matter, maybe internet, maybe in real life, we don't know. Just we hope the best for them. Balance of normality. First of all, what is your response to that? Nothing to do with you. That's, yeah, it's, it's, what your uh, that's the first thing. Yeah, it's, it is nothing to do with me. Uh, the fact that a 14-year-old girl took her life is truly sad. Right. The world we live in today is cruel. The world we live in. The, the fact that something like that happened is almost mind-blowing to me. That's truly. That's truly sad. I actually feel sad inside to see something like that. This fact that I they would say like this because of 14 years old. She's supposed to enjoy her life, you know? She's still a kid. She's supposed to enjoy her life. School, friend, hanging well, there around. There could be, could be problem in school. There is, could be problem in, yeah. with the family. The, there is, could be... Exactly. You don't know what is going on. So yeah. we wish all the best for everyone. If, just find, in small things, try to find a Happiness. positive thing. Yeah, a positive thing in small things. The world is too much cruel in these days. Just said it's romanticizing the gory element. I don't know mm. what she was watching, some kind of suicide videos thing. Mm. I don't know where these things Do are you created. you think the tech companies should be much tougher about stuff like this? I don't know what kind of things she watched, obviously. Mm. I have to be a professional here. I think that the tech companies need to do their best to protect people, I guess, exactly. to a degree. But it's a slippery slope, isn't it? And then they use this slippery slope to, to silence some people and to... to right, and I think, that's a, I think it's a really fine line. And it it's is. a complicated line. It is very you know, I was interested that when you did an interview with The Times, cross that line. No, I haven't, and, I, and this is the thing. And I've been vilified, not because of the things I say, because much more extremist content already exists on the internet. I think the reason I've been attacked and vilified is because of the popularity, because I became so massively famous, not mm. because of what I was actually saying. So as a professional, I analyze that, and I understand that, okay, I'm massively famous now, and certain things have been taken out of context. However, I still do believe I'm a force for good in the world, and I'm not going to sit here. Have and you say, changed though? Ch I don't. It's not about changing. Well, it is. I think that's all. The video is already finished. Yeah. So, what do you think? Give us short conclusion. Well, I like the word that he said uh, almost uh, in every part. The part that I didn't like, I already said about it. And uh, yeah, what I can say. Why? Well, uh, the people such a much against of him that's uh, because he's you were famous him. okay i didn't say that was against him i said i didn't like him that's a different well, okay so let's do make a deal you can steep don't like him mm -hmm. but i want you to take a conclusion of him when you listen to him speaking when you listen to him speaking if it doesn't go with your moral then stay with your i don't okay, like good. you yeah good. i you do you i don't agree with you but I don't dislike you in Santa. That's how I think. I don't agree with you on everything, but some point of view are with mine, so I agree. Okay. So that's what. And some spicy topics to talk about. So thank See you guys ya. for the reaction. See ya.